Hello everyone, this is Crowbeak. Welcome back to my Final Fantasy X Let's Play. We are in Xanarkand. Modern day Xanarkand. In Spira. Busted and broken and looking more like a desert than the eternal night party place that Titus remembers that the Faith dream. We don't know if the Faith ever dream of Xanarkand during the day, but they, uh, that's, they sure haven't shown it to us. Here, it looks a lot more like, like Spira, like it belongs in the, in the modern Spiran world. This is also, as you can see, where we come back to the start screen movie and the starting movie of the game. Now we know why everyone looks so sad around their fire. Uh, they are approaching the end of their pilgrimage, and once Yuna gets the final Aeon, they're going to be marching straight to her doom, and possibly all of theirs as well. Sometimes Guardians survive, and sometimes they don't. And, uh, yeah, it sucks to be them. Even even knowing that they're they're close to success, or, or hopefully success, they... It, it's, it's a success tinged with sorrow, and for a couple of these people, definitely bitterness. Now the hand on the shoulder and the way she reacts makes sense because we know that they're in love and they've basically set it aside for purposes of continuing the save the world thing. We have some idea of what sort of thoughts might be going through Titus's head as he goes up on this hill to overlook the ruins of what we now know are Xanarkand. He, he still hasn't told them that he is a dream. Orin probably knows, but the others don't. Who knows if any of them have any idea what he sees and remembers when he looks out on this vista. The change of colors is a really interesting thing, too. Not only are we're seeing it at sunset, which is a really interesting time of day. It's kind of sunset on the journey. It's... Xanarkand has definitely seen better days. <laughs> Not exactly the sunset of Xanarkand, because it's been destroyed for a while now. But even without the yellow coloration, I think Listen there would to be my story. a lot less blue and purple here. This than he may remembers. be our last chance. Certainly no neon lights. That's very fourth wall breaking, because we're definitely not here. At the, at the beginning of the game, it doesn't really seem like you're... I mean, it's definitely breaking the fourth wall, because he's definitely talking to the player. But... Here, he's, there's just no one for him to talk to. Hey, and another interesting thing... there was thing, more, right? I mean, like that time... Uh, anyone? I think... Yes? I think that we should stop. Maybe. For now. It's interesting that they use the character's default weapons there, regardless of what you actually have equipped. Makes sense with the Brotherhood, but they did the same thing with Yuna as well, and her her default, not default, but her uh, character art rod that she just pulled out is not so iconic in terms of the narrative, and it, it just doesn't have the same significance that the, brother does, the Brotherhood does in terms of development. And take a moment to look at this. Now we actually, we actually do get to see Xanarkand at night, and... It looks a lot more like what Titus remembers in terms of color, especially with those streams of pyreflies. I'm pretty sure that's what that is now. Uh, just sort of hovering over the dead city, sunken into the water that it used to rest upon so gracefully. But there's still, I mean, even though the buildings are still about the same color that he would remember, they are, uh, they are definitely not covered in neon lights anymore. The pyre pyreflies, in a sense, have taken over the lighting duties that were previously held by all the neon. But it's a very different, it's a very different, even though the colors and the, and the timber of the pyreflies' lights is very similar to the neon things, they are not part of the buildings like all those lights were, and they are a symbol of death not a symbol of life, not a symbol of the nightlife of a city. 
it's a neat, it's, I mean, it's just, it's beautiful. And it says so much about how present day Xanarkand differs from the Xanarkand of yesterday. We're not staying for this because we've already determined that these guys are a pain in the butt. So, yep. Bye. It's just the giantest, the giantest flan of them all. Hey, treasure. I really wish this treasure chest wasn't here either. This game has a problem with miss, with inappropriate, inappropriate treasure chests. <sighs> like it shouldn't just be on the path there. It should at least be off on a side path where theoretically, other summoners coming by couldn't get it. But I just, I really wish there were no treasure chests in Xanarkin. This is a really pretty battle. Battle. Bleh. This is a really pretty battlefield, though. I will give them that. I want to attack that. Thank you. The sky is really nice too. I am I am all for the sky. Oh dear, that sounds bad. I like this particular coloration of this kind of enemy. It's got more contrast than most of them do. It's kind of nice. I'm gonna take a minute to use those spears. Yay, she gets a thing. What did she get? Huraga! Totally worth. Excellent. Excellent indeed. Accuracy. And power. Not that much, because we're at the beginning of Titus's bath there, but you know what else. He gets magic points that he is never gonna excuse me never gonna use and evasion which is always useful cool yes get out here we go just listening to the music for a moment it's an orchestral version of Tizanarkin it sounds right sounds like just a moment I might be getting confused because I love all the music in this game I don't even know. I believe it is. But with this song going through my head, I'm having trouble remembering the, the piano to Xanarkand music. The more I think about it, the more I think I'm wrong. I don't know. This is, this is another one of the songs from the soundtrack, which really resonates with me, though. And it is definitely part partly because of all of the... Just, we, I mean, we've just gone through this big, huge string of reveals and seals. And now we have this music, which... I think this is actually an orchestral version of... That's right, this isn't Tazanarkin music. This is an orchestral, or, orchestral version of the music which plays during the love scene. Steki Dane. But it's given a more upbeat feel. It's not it's not a love song here at all. It is a going forward and finishing this crap that we've come here to do kind of song. Looks like the far plane. Close enough. like that he says that. And indeed, we're about to start seeing some cool stuff. This whole path is littered with, uh, this path, this final road to the heart of Xanarkin is littered with, um, with fireflies, and we're gonna start seeing little bits of story, storytelling exposition that is uh, shown to us by the fireflies. Some of those bits are really cool, actually. Um, yes. Burnination. It's what's for dinner. Rawr. Look at his face and all the detail on it. It's 
so cool looking. Um, burn. Oh right, fire is the one not to use on this guy. That's why he didn't die so quickly. Whoops. That's half, not extra damage. My mistake. It's all right. Forward ho. I would say to Xanarkind, but we're not actually going to Xanarkind. We're just GTFOing Xanarkind. Oh dear. I'm gonna pull out Titus and have him flee, but I'm gonna fight this guy. I'm not really, not really ready to fight those. Check out this busted building. Oh, this is the old Blitzball Stadium! We've been here before and watched Titus push through a huge crowd of players right here. I did not notice that playing the game before. But this is also the first time that I've gone through and actually played it trying to analyze it. Still though, can you imagine him coming back here and like, the last time he came here, he was headed for a Blitzball game that changed his life forever because Sin attacked. And now he's coming here and seeing it in the wake of that Sin attack. And just look how busted it is. I love it. This is great. Journeyer of the long road, name yourself. I am the summoner Yuna. I have come from the island of Besaid. Your eyes, my dear, show me the long road you have traveled. Very good. You have journeyed well. Lady Unaleska will surely welcome your arrival. Go to her now and bring your guardians with you. Go. Yes. And look at that, he's fading out. Even the priest dude here is dead, unless it's just a camera trick, but we've we've already determined that death is very much at the heart of Yevon. We're about to find out just how much. If it might benefit the future of Spira, I will gladly give my life. It is the highest honor for which a guardian might ask. Use my life, Lady Yoken, and rid Spira of sin. What? What was that? Our predecessors. She said Lady Yoken, didn't she? Wait, she guarded High Summoner Yoken? This dome is filled with fireflies. It's like one gigantic sphere. People's thoughts remain here, forever. Fun times. Let's see what else the fireflies have to show us. This is quite possibly uh, this is this is one of the most interesting areas in the game, hands down. There, just the fact. I mean, they've set up ah so many things I can say. But hey, zombies! I can just heal them to death, and I think I shall. <laughs> Could I kill it with Kira? Maybe? How much? How many hit points do they have? Kiraga. I want to see how much Kiraga does to it. Because I can! Boom! Ah, oh, I love it. Look at that. Alright, you kill that guy. Uh, yes. This is a really interesting way to do stuff from here. Here, throughout no this entire dome area, we get to watch more little firefly cutscenes like the one that we just saw. And how many games have setting and lore that even allow for this, for something like this? The unique nature of the fireflies and their place in in Spira's life and death cycle, and how they react to the way people think creates this truly unique opportunity for storytelling here and they use it just so perfectly. We're at we're at a point in the journey where uh, like when you when you first show up, the priest that greets you at the door to the dome 
uh, require, not requires, but tells you to show me your eyes so I can see the journey you've been on. This is a journey, a pilgrimage that takes a huge toll on the summoners and their guardians as they go. And and so everyone comes here and they are just these huge balls of emotion, all the things they've been through, they're about to get this final summon so they can go get Sin, all kinds of, of thoughts and memories hovering here in this place with the fireflies. They're going to, to talk to the first summoner who ever defeated Sin, who is still, who is undead and still around, and there's, so it's just, just, yeah, we're about to walk through a whole bunch of little cutscenes that are, that are formed from the ether as we encounter them. And it is such a neat storytelling trope that you will get to see more of in the next episode because I'm at 15 minutes. So I hope you're excited for the next episode. Thank you for watching, and have a good one.